Hi, Cloudera Manager 4.5 was just released, um, I guess, today. And um, uh, in this uh, quick video, I'm just going to document how um, how I can test out uh, CM4.5 uh, very quickly. So um, uh, for this build, I'm actually going to uh, cache the repositories locally because uh, I don't want to rely on the internet. And uh, um, we'll see how this goes. So. Uh, this URL right here, archive.cloudera.com, is uh, fully documented on uh, Cloudera's website. Uh, slash CDH4 is where we can grab the repo as a tarball. Okay, so this is basically a tarball of all of this stuff we can find inside uh, CDH. Now, when you Cloudera Manager uh, and you put it to the to the internet cloud as were to uh, to sneak the repos um, actually pull it from here and uh, instead of doing that what I'm going to do is cache a local copy because uh, I'm gonna try to build uh, six nodes here on my laptop and uh, I think um, asking for the RPM six times is rather overkill and uh, uh, it's going to tax my internet here in the, in the home so uh, repo is a tarball we're going to grab uh, 4.2 and specifically the tarball for my distribution which is uh, CentOS 6 that's what I'm going to use for this okay so um, the X32 is the 32-bit version so I'm not interested in that because uh, Cloudera Manager actually as far as I know requires 64-bit so let me just grab that tarball and also over here I want to grab uh, the repository for Cloudera Manager so again, same idea, archivecloudera.com slash cm4 in this case. Repo is a tarball. We're going to grab 4.5 since that was just released. And uh, again, grab the tarball for your distribution. One more file you'll want to get from uh, the cm4 directory is right here. Um, the under Instead of going under repo as a tarball, you want to look under installer and uh, we're going to pick the latest in this case 4502 and we want to grab this binary file okay this is actually a um, uh, a Linux binary uh, so we just grab that and I'm going to throw all three of these files into my um, my local C drive here in Windows okay okay so now that we've grabbed those three files um, the Cloudera Manager installer dot bin the CM4.5 repository as a tarball and the CDH4, uh, 4.2 in this case, as a tarball. We're going to create a VM and uh, we're going to go custom on this guy. Uh, Workstation 9 is fine. I'll install the OS later, tell it what kind of OS we want, a CentOS 64-bit, and we're going to give this guy a name of N0 for node 0. Okay, I like to use N0 as kind of my base build. Uh, we're going to clone from this afterwards because again I'm trying to save on disk space and uh, get this thing built up quickly. So this stuff is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to give myself a 20 gig SDA and uh, we're going to store it as a single file. Ah, that doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's fine. Not very interested in all that. And notice I'm going to connect the network adapter to NAT. So before we go ahead with all of this, I usually go and uh, check my virtual network and just make sure that my NAT is set to a subnet that I recognize in this case 192.168.123.0 slash 24 okay so now in VMware we're going to drop a router um, or rather a NAT um, IP on dot 2 of your uh, of your subnet so 192.168.123.2 will provide DNS masking as well as um, default route for uh, all my hosts that are connected to the NAT subnet. Anyhow, this is not a VMware video, so there you go, there's N0. And uh, I'm just going to insert my DVD now, and I believe that's the one that I want, CentOS 6.3, 64-bit uh, DVD 1. I'm going to boot off this guy. Actually, before I boot, <laughs> I should probably uh, give myself some more drives as well. Since we're trying to simulate a real cluster here, we're just going to create four more disks just like that okay notice how I'm just using the defaults alright so now I'm gonna have an SDB SDC SDD and an SDE B through E will be uh, data disks okay so this is for the operating system and these four right here one two three four 
will be um, the disks that will be used for data. Now, um, all right, that works. Start this guy up. And if you've seen my other videos, you already know I hate graphical installs. So I'm just going to ask for text and, of course, expert. So the majority of this install is going to proceed um, just with the defaults. The only thing we have to watch out for is that we don't want to install the operating system on SDB, C, D, or E. We only want to use SDA. But uh, the rest of this is pretty much uh, straightforward. So um, I'm just going to poke through the, uh, the prompts here. Welcome to CentOS, English, US. Uh, just reinitialize all the disks. We are not using UTC. Give ourselves a password, whatever. Sure. And uh, this is where we have to be careful. We just want to deselect B, C, D, and E. All I did was I tabbed over and I hit space bar to, un to uncheck this little star thing here. So that basically means we're only going to use SDA for the operating system. Um, and we might as well say use entire drive. Who cares? Uh, right changes. Now this is going to default to using LVM and some other grossness that um, for a cluster node I'm gonna say is gross because we really don't need all this um, fanciness but um, I'm just trying to keep this uh, very simple. Uh, what I will do is I will distill all these steps into a kickstart uh, when I have a chance and post it up on my blog so um, you can very quickly build up these uh, nodes Okay, so the install is just finishing now. First time we're going to boot this system, uh, we're going to boot into single user mode. Uh, I like to kind of keep things as clean as possible with my installs. This also proves that pretty much all these steps that we're going to take by hand here can be done in the post script of a kickstart. So we're booted into single user mode. First thing we're going to do is kill SE Linux. So we'll just do that. That was uh, Etsy, SE Linux config. And we're going to also take out IP tables. And now we want to um, quickly create our network config. So that's Etsy sysconfig network. We're going to give it the host name n0 example.com and gateway of 192.168.123.2. Under network scripts, actually, I'm not even sure why I bothered to edit this file. We're just going to start from scratch anyhow. ETH0 boot proto equals static uh, IP address equals 192.168.123.99, something we're not going to use. All right, and slash 24. And also, we want name resolution. Why not? Uh, name server 192.168.1232. And of course, we'll punch in our static host config 101 and one example com and two example com. All right, six nodes should be adequate. I've also done the same in Windows. So if you go to C, Windows, System32, Drivers, Etsy, in here there's a host file. Let me just uh, resize that. Right there in Windows, and I've also put the same entries in there. Okay? That just makes it convenient for uh, working with this. Uh, both from the Windows side and also from within uh, the Unix environment. Okay, so um, now what I want to do is quickly make a cache that will be local. Okay, so I'm going to create a directory called stage CentOS, and you can probably already guess what I'm going to do here. I'm going to copy in all the RPMs from my DVD. Um, the goal is to not rely on uh, the internet for this install. So I'll just do that, go to media, 
and CP into uh, stage CentOS like so. Okay, the copy is done. And what I can do is just create the repository here. So I'm going to remove all the existing repo files in here and I'm going to create a new one. Just call it local CentOS .repo or something like that. And local CentOS will be the name, base URL equals file stage CentOS should be adequate, GPG check equals zero, and we're good. Okay, so now if I do a yum list, I should be able to see all the crap in CentOS. There it is. Now this is perfect because I'm actually going to need a few extra packages, so I might as well just install them now. Um, Perl, open SSH clients, and part ed. Okay. So I'll just do that really fast. And now I can e you mount my CD. Oh, I don't need to do that. What am I doing? Just disconnect the CD. And I'm going to install VMware tools. Now what I want to do is install the VMware tools. So just untar VMware tools, run the install with dash D. Dash D just says don't prompt me for crap. Uh, the default should be adequate. Well, dash D really stands for default, I believe. Okay, so now VMware tools are installed. Now we want to partition one of our disks. So new primary partition, make it the entire disk write out the partition, make file system, we're going to use fourth extended, uh, no reserved blocks for root, we want extent allocation which is new and fourth extended, um, hello, didn't need to see that, that was rather annoying, extent, dir indexes want to be enabled as well, we want that enabled, and let's have sparse super blocks because we don't, especially for larger disks, this is going to make a big difference. Now, our disk is only uh, 20 gigs, so this is minor, but uh, also I don't like to format out too many uh, inodes. So, dash i, oh, dash i allows me to um, uh, hello. Right. That's what happens when you get stuff printed on top. So anyhow, the command looks like this. Okay, so um, basically uh, I want to use fourth extended. I don't want any reserved um, uh, blocks. I want extent allocation enabled, dir indexing, uh, as well as no, um, not as many extra copies of the super block, 4K blocks, and minimize the number of inodes. Now you can go a little more aggressive on this, but I figure 4 megs on average per file is about right. Um, okay, so this message that keeps coming up is because I don't actually have my network up, I'm going to bring it up. Why not? Now, this is going to make a little bit of a mess before we clone, but that's okay. It has to do with UDEV. Uh, all right, so for I, N, C, D, and E, do, we're just going to clone the partition table from SDB. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, uh, I highly recommend you just kind of repeat the steps that I did earlier, but uh, this is me being lazy. Uh, this really is useful if you have like 12 spindles or whatever. In our case, we're only simulating four, but dir index sparse super. Again, same thing, block size of 4K, and inode count uh, on, a, on the low side. So dev sd dollar i uh, one. All right, so you can see that's pretty fast. Um, now, now we've got all our disks up and ready. Um, since my mind is on it right now, why don't I just quickly do a ssh key gen? Okay, so we know how that works. Oops. And I'm just going to do a little cheat here. RSA pub. Now this is not necessary, this is just for my laziness later on. Q 
keys. All right, so that's done. And since my mind's on it too, why don't I just take care of um, SSH config for the client. And let's just kill the strict host key checking. So in other words, don't prompt me the first time I connect to an unknown host. Well, it'll, it'll harass me still with a warning, but it won't uh, pause. All right, let's go back to uh, making the mount points here. So disks, uh, whoops, slash disks, slash disk one, two, three, four is good enough. And let's create a subdirectory called dn for data node. There it is. Let's do the same for name node. And let's do the same for um, secondary name node. I don't know. That, that should be adequate. I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll clean all this up later. It's not that big a deal. Uh, and now what I want to do is quickly edit my FS tab and have SDB. We'll go to, oops, disk, disk one. And this is fourth extended. We want uh, no A time, no dir A time updating. And we're going to do the same, of course, with the other disks. Okay, so that's what we want in the FS tab. And mount A should give me all my crap. All right, there's um, there's my four disks. Okay, remember I'm still in single user mode here. I have initialized the network just for my convenience, and actually I'm going to need that anyhow very shortly. Okay, uh, now let's create a few dummy users just because who knows, might need them later, and I don't feel like setting up LDAP or anything like that. So we'll just have local users. The nice thing about doing all this before we um, uh, clone is that all the UIDs and whatnot will be matched across the board. Okay, again, it's a quick cheat, but it's better to do this af uh, before you clone rather than after. All right, because then then you have an identical setup across all your nodes. Um, all right, I'll bring up SSH. Why not? Now this is not the coolest thing ever because we're going to create our host keys now and. I'm actually lazily going to clone this host key across all my nodes, so um, security is obviously not uh, being regarded here very, very much. So um, uh, now what I want to do is just quickly copy over the stuff that I downloaded earlier. So remember I downloaded uh, CDH tarball and the CM tarball as well as Cloudera Manager installer here. So uh, I'm going to use PuTTY, well PSCP. There it is, PSCP um, to root 192.168.123.99 uh, into stage. Yes, uh, and the password is that. Okay, so the three files are now copied into my slash stage. There they are. Just going to make Cloudera Manager executable and untar. These two, these two files, the CDH 4.2 and the CM 4.5. Okay, so now that these uh, these tarballs are untarred, um, you'll notice that I have now a CDH directory and a CM directory under which there is a version symlink 4, which points to 4.2 in this case. So that's for CDH and for CM it's the same thing. We've got 4 inside of there which is pointing to 4.5. So uh, inside these directories we have the repo data and of course the RPMs. So this is convenient because now all I really have to do is go into uh, create some more repositories in this case. I'm going to call this local uh, cloudera.repo and I'm going to put a couple of repositories in here, local CM and local CDH. Okay, that way we can avoid going to the direct, uh, to the internet for this stuff. Base URL will be file stage CM4. Okay. And uh, gpg check equals 0. And base URL in this case file stage CM4 Oops, CDH. <laughs> I'm paying attention. GPG check equals zero. There we are. Uh, let's just see if we can find them. There it is. Uh, and CM, whoops, CM 
and you can see that yes the local CM stuff is in there okay so that's good now we have some whoops we have some local repositories configured um, the last thing I want to do is uh, just make sure this thing is ready for cloning we're actually done which is kind of cool so let's just delete this persistent rules thing that um, that Red Hat added uh, I'm not going to get into pros and cons there um, so let me just get rid of all of my scripties and we'll halt this guy and we're ready for cloning so a quick way to clone take a snapshot just for cleanliness we're gonna call this clonable or clonable <laughs> and this guy's ready to go alright so wanna right click on this guy go to manage clone next base it base the clone on an existing snapshot and create a link clone we're gonna call this guy n1 and I'm going to repeat that procedure now for n2 through to 6 okay so now I have six clones of that snapshot they're all linked clones I'm going to create a this is really just metadata in VMware workstation but it makes it a little easier to track all this I'm gonna call this CM45 okay uh, folder here so I'm just going to move each of these into that folder okay, again this just makes my life a little easier and for cleanliness I'm gonna close the home tab and the N0 tab and now what I can do is go to this group highlight them all and just hit play okay so when they boot up they're all going to have the wrong IP right so what we need to do is fix that so we're just going to edit Etsy sysconfig network give it the right host name and also IFCFG dash ETH 0 we'll give this guy the right static IP and then just bounce the box I will proceed to do the same on each of the remaining nodes so now that all my nodes are done I should be able to ping n1 oops, n1 example com from within windows n2 dot example com n3 example com n4 example com n5 example com and finally n6 example com from windows and also of course between the nodes I also have SSH equivalency uh, between all the root users on these six nodes. Now that's just useful, right? Uh, but not necessary. And I'll show all that to you in a second. So Cloudera Manager, when we run the Cloudera Manager installer, remember I made this executable earlier before cloning, I want to add the additional option skip repo package equals one now this is all in the Cloudera documentation now we're doing this to say don't install the repo file in Etsy yum repos D um, that points to the internet to grab uh, the packages okay so we want to do everything locally and, and the packages we're talking about here are the JDK and Cloudera manager itself so we just say accept all the licenses and crap like that and now you can see the JDK is being installed. It's not being downloaded. And there's 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 evidence here. If you look at this um, the network adapter here, it's not blinking green. Okay, so that green light would indicate network activity. I could actually disconnect my uh, my Wi-Fi here um, to really prove that we're not hitting the internet, but um, I I don't feel like doing that right now. So. Um, uh, you just have to believe me the speed at which this install is proceeding uh, would not be possible if I was relying on the internet for this so we're almost actually done with the Cloudera manager portion um, the next thing that will happen is uh, I'll be prompted to uh, open a browser and point that browser to uh, node 1 so it'll be n1.example.com 
port 7180. Okay, so I've already opened up a uh, browser here inside Windows since we do have um, connectivity to the VM from there. There's the URL right there. It does take a few seconds for it to come up. I've actually done this uh, uh, in the past where I try to go here too quickly and it's not up yet, like for instance right now. You see, so it's not up. But all you really have to do is wait, okay? Um, if you if you saw that success message earlier and it tells you to open a browser and go there, you just have to wait. Okay, so I've waited long enough. There you go. Admin, admin, and whatever. Log in, upload a license file if you want the fully uh, the full enterprise version. I just want the free edition. And this is what's uh, available. Now, we didn't actually download the Impala repository, so we don't have that local. But I'm just going to show you really quickly how this, how we can use this to our advantage, okay, all of this. So first, I just want to scan for nodes 1, dot, uh, one through 6.example.com, do a search, found them all. Don't really know why N4 has such a high latency there, but um, well, that's, that's, that's life with VMs, right? So we say continue on that. I want to use packages to do the install. CDH4 is what I'm interested in, but I'm going to use a custom repository. Otherwise, why did I bother with all this? So uh, file colon slash slash slash, so three slashes, stage slash um, CDH slash four. Okay, so there's three slashes. The first couple slashes is just for the URL, and the and the, the third slash is to indicate you know the root of the file system. Now, now with Impala, because we didn't actually cache uh, the Impala repository, um, right now it's still in beta, so there isn't a convenient tarball of the entire RPM uh, set and the repo data. So I mean, I would have. Uh, I could have done a wget or something like that and grabbed it all, but instead of doing that, we're actually going to rely on the internet to grab Impala since it's not too big anyhow, I mean, compared to the rest of this. And uh, Cloudera Manager, we also cached here, and there it is. Okay, so stage CM4. So there we go. Say continue. How do we want to authenticate to all the nodes? I'm going to use the root user with a password. Okay, now it is uh, uh, it is possible as well to provide a private key, but then I have to actually provide the file here, and I'm not interested in doing that. So, happens to be the same password on all six nodes since we cloned it from the same config. Um, and how many simultaneous installations do we want? Um, obviously, you can change this to five, 15 or three. In my case, I only have six, so I could just leave it at six. But just to make this interesting. Um, I'm going to set this to three just to show that we can limit the uh, parallelization of the install. Okay, so we say continue, and you can see right now uh, these three, four, five, and six are waiting to uh, to start, whereas nodes one, two, and three are already started. And um, to kind of prove that we're not hitting the network here, we can go and take a look at node one the network adapter. Now that, that's not really good proof since of course it's going to blink because it is communicating with this browser here. But um, if we go to details, okay, uh, you can actually monitor the uh, locations where all of this stuff is coming from and uh, you will not see any any uh, pointers to the outside world here. Okay, so there's no downloading from uh, the CentOS uh, network, uh, internet repositories or things like that. Okay, so in our case, we will need to resolve a lot of CentOS dependencies uh, because we did a fairly uh, minimal install of CentOS in the base um, VM. So uh, if we take a look in here and we take a look at the yum repository, uh, sorry, the repository directory, uh, you can see that yes, we've added these additional repos, um, and that's just for your convenience, but Notice that they are pointing to the local repository. Now, uh, if you have objection to first pre-caching all these files in the actual uh, node itself, um, notice that all of this is read-only, so it's very easy to cache all this into like an NFS mount somewhere. Anyhow, 
Uh, so you can see it's proceeding just fine and uh, we'll just let it go. Okay, so this install is almost done. You can see that we are uh, uh, just waiting for the last couple notes to finish here. They are being uh, done in parallel. Uh, you can see that notes 4 and 6 finish before 5 um, and we look good. So now we're just going to make sure that uh, all the packages are installed successfully and also do some other sanity checks. Uh, Clutter our manager obviously is trying to make your life as easy as possible. So um, these are the things we check right there. And uh, there's a summary of the versions of the packages that have been installed. Okay, and it's been installed across nodes 1 through 6. Now what do you want to do? All right, do you want Impala or not? Well, we wasted our time to install Impala, so why don't we say we want Impala? So one of these two are probably what we're going to choose. And let's go all out and say we also want HBase. Now, um, yeah, so there's a little bit of a warning here. Um, Real-time delivery here, so what are we talking about here? I guess you've got... Uh, HDFS, MapReduce, Uzi, Hive, and Hue uh, are assumed in pretty much uh, all of these. So they're not assumed, but I mean, this is kind of the base, right? So you've got Hue, which is you know, easy to use, uh, nice development type of environment, um, supposed to be um, yeah, easy to use. Hive, uh, which is also meant for those of us legacy sequelers. Um, Uzi, which is uh, workflow management, so again, that's included in all four configs, and uh, MapReduce and HDFS, which are the core of Hadoop. So this, these two are truly the core of Hadoop. So, um, and of course, included in all uh, all four um, combinations. Of course, custom, you can go in here and say, well, I only want HDFS. I don't want MapReduce. I only want HBase. Of course, HBase implies. Uh, uh, Zookeeper. Uh, what else do we need? I guess. Um, hmm. Sure, let's say hi if why not. Um, and we don't want map producer yarn or whatever. Okay, so it's it's up to you, obviously, to uh, pick and choose what you want. Now, um, in terms of map reduce, um, if we say all services. You know, it, it it includes everything. It's just map, it's MapReduce, not in terms of MapReduce, but you know, it's MapReduce, HDFS, Zookeeper, everything. So let's let's go ahead and do that and say inspect role assignments. So you can actually uh, see where we're going to place the roles. So uh, Zookeeper, we're going to run on Node One and only Node One. Um, that that might be adequate for your needs. Uh, you might decide you want a couple more nodes of this. Uh, data node. We're going to use all all of these nodes as a data node. But let's say let, let's not use node one. Okay, for whatever reason, I've decided not to. Okay, so uh, obviously, notice it's smart enough to take out the region server as well for HBase. Okay, so now this is only meant to be a quick uh, and dirty demonstration of an install. Uh, it's not meant to cover all the architecture behind this. So. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it as the default. So we'll use all four, all six as data nodes. Uh, we'll throw the name node and the uh, let's throw the secondary on a different box. Um, what else might I quickly change here? Obviously, task trackers on all boxes where I'm running um, data nodes. Some people will decide maybe I only want task trackers on these three, uh, and I want region servers on well. Yeah, you get the idea. The tide, obviously, um, not overly interesting at this point. And uh, as you can see, this is very quick and dirty. Uh, we got CM four five installed, and we're we're up and running. Well, we're almost up and running. So um, that's fine. Looks good. Well, obviously, it can't test connection because it hasn't been created yet. We're using the embedded one, so we say continue. Yeah. Uh, there we go. So this this part is actually kind of important. Now notice that I did not put everything under DFS DN earlier. Uh, I think I screwed up in my uh, my my directory names and I created DN 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 underneath. So what I'm going to do is just quickly clean that up. And oh, 
<laughs> Actually, it appears I did this underneath the mount point. So it's before mounting. I, I, I'm kind of silly me, but I, I actually didn't uh, create those directories in the the, um, the disk. I created them before actually doing the mount. So um, there you go. This was by design. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you quickly hack these kind of uh, these quen these kind of uh, installs really fast. But um, obviously, I'll clean that up in my uh, Kickstart version of this. And um, uh, notice that uh, we're smart enough to have discovered the mount points. Okay, so so the data dirs make some sense. The um, the, the the data dirs for data nodes. Um, here you can see again it's different. Uh, well, for each node, you know you can customize this. So we're smart enough to see it on all of them. Now, in the case of uh, wow, this just goes on. Uh, let's see. In the case of name node. Uh, these are the directories we'll use and for the secondary name node we'll just use this directory now for the secondary I'm not really convinced that this is a good place for it you might decide to throw it on a local disk somewhere but it doesn't really matter um, well I mean you know as long as you understand what it's doing same with the um, uh, same with the um, the intermediate spill directories here so so again we're gonna spread these across the four mount points uh, for for load balancing purposes Okay, so uh, let's just say we're happy with this. Seems that Cloudera Manager has picked reasonably sane uh, locations for everything, and it'll actually go through and initialize or configure each of those components as we decided uh, earlier. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Congratulations. And you can see everything is up. Thanks for watching.